So there are six topics I'm going to talk about in the first half, in the next ten minutes. Um, the top three are much more detailed than the bottom three. Uh, these are different parts of establishment that I've worked with through YouTube. So charity, mainstream media, healthcare, government, education, activism. Um, I can read. Round of applause, please. <laughs> Thank you. Just a bit of the boost I needed. So charity. Um, five years ago, I used a website called stickham.com, which is a live streaming website. Uh, and I decided it would be good to do a charity event, which, because it was called Stickham, I called it Stickham 24-hour chat. Very original, I know. And uh, I decided from my university bedroom to set up my laptop and just try and get as much funding uh, as I could for UNICEF. And five years on, I've done it every year, just building on it. And looking back, I can't believe it, because five years on, it's in a TV studio. People like Jonathan Ross and Stephen Fry watch it. One and a half million people tune in to watch me uh, and my friends. Uh, and we've raised, um, last year alone, $35,000 for UNICEF. And there we go there. So with, with this model, um, I want to explain what I think the charity model that I've proposed is successful. Uh, and all these elements I'm talking about will relate to the end goal that we all want as human beings. And actually, this is why I, I love this, this, this day, actually, is because it's such... Uh, a, a warm feeling to be in a room of people who just give a shit about the world, and uh, it just means a lot. Um, <laughs> so the first point is a global cause. Now, if I said to uh, the people I wanted to support me, um, it's going to raise money for a local hospital, a lot of my friends in America wouldn't bother because it's out of sight, out of mind. Um, it's, it's not something that relates them directly. So by choosing UNICEF, um, there's not many charitable people that would disagree UNICEF was a good cause. Um, and for me, it's about raising money for children in the world that don't have the necessities of life, don't have internet, which is what I'm about, uh, and therefore don't have a voice. They're just born into a world. They have no perceptions of what's happening elsewhere. And, and they ask themselves the question, you know, is, this, is this what it is to live? Is this what it is to suffer? So the next point, point which is about the people uh, taking part, um, I've got people like um, the band The Dirty Youth from Wales, Sorted Food, who were some chefs, had some who designed stuff for Robot Wars, uh, VU, which is a question-answer video website, which I'm currently working on a Jacques Fresco hologram. So uh, for, for years to come, even after he passes, um, his, his, his vision, he'll still be able to answer people's questions. So I'm going out there soon to deal with that. Um, Stickade uh, had some pillows made from Froboy. Uh, and Charlie McDonald, the most subscribed in the UK. Now, all of these people on the charity event did what they normally do for fun, except they were doing it for charity. So they were doing just what they normally did. They benefited from it, and also they were saving people's lives uh, from people around the world. You know, they didn't have to be compromised. And something I'm going to do a video on, uh, which came to mind when doing this tour, is the notion of being selfish or selfless. It seems like it's an either-or thing, and I've been criticised for sometimes being uh, selfish and uh, applauded for being selfless. But for me, I don't know what the word would be, but together I think they can exist. I feel good when I do charity work and I see good things happen. There is nothing wrong with that, because there's two choices. You can either feel good about something uh, and doing something charitable, or you can feel good like punching someone in the face, which isn't as good. <laughs> Time and money. Because it was a 24-hour event, it meant that no matter where you were in the world, the global community could get involved. I had people in New Jersey who uh, said, oh, I can't tune in, you're in England. And I said, in 24 hours, I'm sure there's at least two minutes that you can tune in for. And in terms of money, if someone had only a dollar or a pound to spare, because they saw a global community from all over the world acting at once, they could actually see their contribution had a significant effect for everything else. And the most important part, which is the thing I go on again and again, which is um, geographical isolation is irrelevant. Uh, and I'll give you a case study now, which was, and I don't need sound for this, by the way. Um, you may remember in March last year, the tsunami disaster in Japan. Now, if that happened about 10 years ago, the government may have reported on it. They, they were trying to die it down, actually, now with, you know, the nuclear technology and whether checks were done, you know, keeping control of the situation. But because of the internet, within minutes, you know, the people that were just living everyday lives were left with nothing more than clothes on their body. This was streamed to the world, and people all over the world tune in. And there was this massive of empathy. And as a result, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Stickham, uh, which is the live streaming website I did presenting for Life for Japan, we were able to raise money for people we didn't even know. And there's a great case study in the States of when the iPad 2 came out, um, people who were going to go and buy it uh, that day saw this footage 
and they didn't buy the iPad 2, and they actually gave the money to the charities. People they didn't even know, people they wouldn't have cared about before that day, but they saw it and they thought, that could have been me. And it comes back to that thing I said about selfishness and selflessness. You know, They related empathy. You think, if that happened to me, and you, you look across all religions, treat others as you'd like to be treated, there is a, a selfish or self-conscious element to it. There's nothing bad about that. So geographical isolation is irrelevant, and the internet is a great celebration of that. And finally, completing the story, um, people want to know where their money goes, so you think of foreign aid and where the government passes it to other governments. Um, With our stories now, we're able to show you where the money goes and the children uh, and people it helps, Uh, and that's a great thing about the internet, completing the story. Mainstream media, the next thing. I've been at battles with them the past one to two years. I can't stand mainstream media. Um, I've been on Sky News talking about online identity, in which they were claiming that um, I get drunk at parties, which I don't know how they came up with it, and I challenged them. They said, oh, yeah, I'm just saying as an example, you know, any chance to put a spin, you've got to be prepared. Um, uh, This was um, about uh, Ask the Prime Minister, something I'll get to in a moment, and then I've been on LBC supporting the Occupy movements and stuff for just YouTube gatherings, etc., but the example I want to come up with is BBC Upstage in 2009. I got a phone call um, from Endemol, who do Big Brother, and they saw that I'd done Stick the 24-hour thing, and they said, how would you like to spend six hours in a box, a glass box? And I was like, okay, go on, <laughs> which probably wasn't the best thing to say at first. Um, but the plan was in Bristol Town Centre, they were going to have two boxes, one orange, one purple. You entertain for six hours on a, a big clock, and you compete against someone in the other glass box. And they wanted me on it, and the prize money was £10,000. And the internet, uh, internet community could vote. But they were also asking all my other YouTube friends uh, to get involved, and I knew what they were doing. The mainstream media, television, wanted to get internet viewership onto their websites and for us to knock each other out. You know, the us and them mentality that we talk about quite often. So we all said we were going to do it, but what they didn't realise was I spoke to the others and said, let's work together. We beat every act on national television by eight times the votes. Endemol did smear campaigns. They got people to come and boo us when we came to win the next round. And it never got commissioned again. Uh, And it even got to the point that as soon as the the show ended, they closed it down uh, and they didn't even get our taxis back. They just were pissed off. and being mindful of time. Healthcare, probably the most important part for me because um, I'm someone who has just always cared about people. As long as other people are happy, I'm happy. Can't explain it, it's just who I am. Uh, and I studied psychology uh, for university. Actually, someone who spoke earlier today, I don't know if she's still here, was actually a lecturer for one of my years, um, which was cool. Um, and for healthcare, um, what really sparked for me, I, I did psychology and I, I, I didn't continue after the three years because I realised I was able to help more people through the internet than just getting in more debt and spending another four or five years in education down a road that you don't know where it's going to lead because jobs are always changing, etc. And I just want to bring attention to this comment on a video I made uh, about three years ago called You Are Not Alone, when I was very depressed, I went in therapy. And it's this second last line here, which is, I've done this week without my depressants medication for the first time ever. Wait, (laughs) thank you. Um, Let's put that in perspective. Someone I don't even know, I've never met in my life, has been given depressant medication from a doctor, because obviously that's the best cure. And from seeing a video where some stranger has expressed just the pain he's had, that it's okay to do what you do, and just being an open human being, they were able to get off medication. And I think that says something very significant about um, the medical system of today. And so this was the video. Uh, over 100,000 views. I've received hundreds of letters of people, some people who've no longer taken their lives. And it's not because I'm extra- extraordinary. I'm just a human being. And, and, you know, the internet allows us to share our experiences more because we all have common experience. And so this made me come up with a theory, which I wasn't able to do for my third year uh, because it was too ambitious. Uh, they told me to do something more simple. Uh, and I was never able to run with it because... Um, I needed investment to get empirical research, to have credentials against my name. Uh, And I've never shared it because I was worried some some business was going to run off with it. And it's just because I want the integrity of the project to still lay there. Um, But I'm going to share it with you today because I feel I'm not going to be able to run with this. Let's make it public domain. If anyone runs with it and it's not good, you've seen it here first. (laughs) So the first step is if you're ever depressed is to record yourself 
on video. Um, there's plenty of times where I just set up a camera, talk for 20 minutes, externalizing your thoughts. The inner frustrations externalize, you may feel better. But of course, that doesn't always work. I'm doing this very quickly. Uh, the second is to import the footage and then to watch it back. I could only find a picture of a cat. Uh, I've never tried it with a cat. I don't know if they would get much benefit. But by uploading it and watching the footage, you're seeing yourself as a third-person entity because you may have had it before where you, were depre you, you, you knew someone who was depressed and you gave them advice. But then when you go through that same problem, you can't take your own advice because your head's in a cloud, you know, your, your judgment's clouded. And, and the metaphor I'd use, it's like you have a tennis ball and you threw it against the wall. It's only when you catch it again that you realize the power that you were dealing with in the first place. And so with this, by watching yourself in third person, you're seeing yourself as another human being. If you just talked in the mirror, you just look crazy. Um, and so by doing that, uh, you may actually realize, oh, I understand this, and I, and I can understand why I was sad, and you may come to some resolution. But of course, that doesn't work. This is me pretending to edit a video. I wasn't. I was watching porn. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't. It was sexist against women. It, it's, it's gay porn. Um, by editing the video and focusing on specific areas, you know, cutting out um, the bits in between and making it more viral, you're analysing things and you think, oh, that part's not relevant of what I was trying to say, but that part is, and then you may come to a better conclusion. But if that doesn't work, the final stage is broadcast yourself. That was when uh, I was on holiday, family holiday, spoke for 20 minutes, uploaded it, it was me sitting in the bathroom and people gave me nice comforting words and I realised I wasn't alone. But can anyone think of a problem with doing this? Someone can shout out. Trolls is the key word. <laughs> That's the troll alarm. <laughs> yeah, trolls. So you sometimes get comments like, uh, go kill yourself. And I think this is a real challenge with a, having a, a global empathic society with the internet, is people haven't evolved with it yet. YouTube's only been around six years. Um, the only reason that I empathize with people online is because I've met tens of thousands around the world. So when I talk to people online, they go, uh, I go, do you want to meet up? And they're like, we've only just sort of started speaking. I'm like, but yeah, I have a, a good judgment now of what you must be like in person. And personally, online, talking to someone on a chat room in a day, you get to know them much better than speaking over loud music in a nightclub. I don't, I don't know if you agree to that. Um, so I think you get to know people a lot better. And so um, there are plenty of examples like this that I could give, but I've got to hastily move on. Um, and I had a solution. And I wanted to create a website where if you were depressed, you would sign up, uh, you would do a psychiatric test, uh, and you'd find out if you were a severe case. And if you were a severe case, uh, therapists would jump in uh, and help out. But if not, you could use it, and it'd be a forum. You'd upload your video, it'd be monitored to ensure there were no trolls, uh, and hopefully you would come to solutions. Because I believe that you don't need a counsellor to, to get you out of depression in, in serious cases, yes. What you need is just people that are open who can share common experiences because what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. The whole point of empathy is sharing experiences that you yourself has not had yet. So we all know you're going to die if you jump off a tall building. We haven't done it, but we know, and that's a part um, of empathy. And my theory is this, which I'd love to test one day, and if there's anyone else who can make this happen, I know there was a documentary going to be done on current TV for this, but unfortunately the plug got pulled, um, is... Once they've got through their depression and they're better with what they do, I think they'd actually stay in the community and then share their experiences with newcomers and it would grow more and more and hopefully people would then realise there's a community where people aren't alone. And, and that's my hope for the theory of expressive insight, so there's that. The final three sections are very quick before I explain the actual project I want to pitch to you all today. Uh, government, Gordon Brown did ask the PM where he put himself on a pedestal online and said, I'm going to answer any questions. So he was exposed online, complete transparency. I asked a question about freedom of speech. People all saw my question. They voted for it. They wanted him to answer it. They had perceptions of how he may respond to it. And did he answer the question? No, of course not. He put spin, but he's exposed. And there's a great example with Barack Obama recently on a Google Hangout where the top-rated comment was about, I think it's Richard Dwyer, who was... He's been extradited to the US for Pirate Bay uh, for saying that Obama supported, but he said, oh, I just don't know, and it goes on. But people are losing more faith in the government system because on a level playing field, which is, this is meant to be, it's not the case. Um, but afterwards, I was invited to the Foreign Office to talk about digital diplomacy. I was asked to support um, against the arms trade, uh, for, for the arms trade agreement. 
and uh, that was my interest in government. In education, uh, for my university, I, I talked about um, blended learning. Um, I, I think it's outrageous that you can expect someone to study for 12 weeks a semester and then you expect them to regurgitate that in a two-hour exam. You could be a genius who has so much to contribute to the world, but because you can't write it on a piece of paper, you are condemned to not share that knowledge with the world, and I think that's disgusting. So uh, I advocated a patchwork scheme in which um, if you were good at coursework, you do coursework. If you are good at speaking or doing video blogging, you can do that. If you're good at exams, do exams. But we should live in a society where people are allowed to be the best they can be with the tools we've got. Not, I'm sorry, um, you can't write on paper, F. Because, you know, the grade boundaries and all that can affect you for the rest of your life in the current system. And uh, a lot of the stuff that's happened to me is not because of my education. It's helped me a lot, and I'm not condemning it completely, but... It's the experiences from online. And finally, activism. I don't need to talk about this. We all know what the Zeitgeist movement is. If not, there might be problems. Uh, but for me, it's, it's a gateway to find people that give a damn about the world. And it led to um, something called the Universal Solutions Project, which I've now got 10 minutes to explain. Meeting Jacques Fresco in the summer last year was a hugely inspiring thing for me. Um, anyone who, um, I'm sure you all know about him. Um, he's, he's, he's on the, I think he's turning 95 now. Has worked pretty much every day of his life. Um, and what was so inspiring about him was the fact that he's not bitter. He, he had a, a goal in life, and he's worked towards it for, throughout. And it's made me have patience. And I, I think that even though Stick Aid is a really good thing, and there's some really exciting things for this year, and I hope you all do tune in in, in October when it is, that this is what I want to work with for the rest of my life. And uh, for the last 10 minutes, I hope you will take something positive from my journey so far, but something from this because I think if we can do this, this is how we get the word out. This is how, if there is going to be a global collapse, we have people at the ready. So bear with me. The Universal Solutions Project. The objective is to create an online database that empowers people to discover solutions to any problems that currently exist on the planet today. It sounds a bit obvious, I guess. So the questions I've been asking, um, especially at schools and primary schools uh, and secondary schools, which have had interesting answers, is what is education? It's one of those things we never really question, you know, you never question why does someone say have a nice day when it should be have a nice life, or, or why we clap like that. It's slapping two hands together, and I know that you're going to be worried at the end of when you clap. Um, and, and awareness as well, because I think they go hand in hand. So with education, I, I think education is not about just the transfer of information, it's about inspiring people to ask the questions why, you know, to ask more, not just be... Uh, an empty vessel that is filled up with information just to regurgitate it on a, on, a, on a page. It's about your experiences, and the experiences I've had through YouTube has just been through open source online communities, and these are experiences you can all have as well. And the problems with education, it's your geographical location, which can be defeated by the internet. Uh, money, uh, which can be defeated by the internet. I, I know, um, I can't remember the name, he was in Moving Forward um, at Stanford University. Um, Sapolsky, thank you. Um, 12 weeks of lectures up for free, you know, when you think people are getting hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Uh, and league tables, you know, the reason teachers, you know, might be asked questions about curiosity and they'll go, I'd love to answer that right now, but I can't because we need to get the grades so we get the funding and I keep my job. The other part is also to be disciplined in a broad range of subjects so you don't get manipulated in society. You know, you could be a chemist or a cameraman or something like this. It's good to have a wide discipline because then you can become uh, more humanitarian. And uh, just to inspire you and to open your mind, and I know this has made a lot of people's jaws drop, uh, it's something called Reading Genius. Has anyone heard of this? Reading Genius. If not, I'm glad. <laughs> um, I uh, was shown this by my driving instructor, and if that doesn't prove anything, a man who's supposed to teach me how to drive has now showed me a tool on how he can read up to 100 pages a minute with total recall. So the question and the inspiration you should be getting now is, why is this not known? Why don't we know about it? Why is this not in society? Those, that is true education because it inspires awareness. You want to start questioning things more. Uh, and, and to explain the science very quickly, um, when you learn to read as a kid, you, you learn to read with an inner monologue, you know, by how you read the words. Um, and... Uh, it means you read quite slowly, but your brain would rather go much faster. 
Um, and so the music that they provide slows down your brain waves, which is similar to that of a child where they absorb much more information. Uh, and I didn't finish the course, but I read up to 30 pages a minute. Now, the average person is one uh, page a minute. It was what I was before. And just to put that in perspective, I, I was before an English class, and I was awful at English in secondary school. I read a 300-page novel in 10 minutes. And when we went through the class together, they were talking about a certain issue. And I said, yeah, but wasn't that mentioned halfway down page 53? And there was a moment of silence. They opened the book, and there it was. And I was scared. Everyone looked at me as a freak. Um, and, and the nature is that the more you read because you're excited by it, the more you uh, practice that technique. I was lazy and haven't, and I'm yet to uh, pick it up again. So bad, bad me. And I came up with this at the beginning of the week, this theory. So it could be bullshit. Forgive me. We can test it. Um, but if, if the middle is empathy, I think it's to do with education and awareness as a cycle. So... You could be educated about something and therefore you become aware or you're aware of something like the tsunami disaster so you want to find out the solution. So you educate yourself which then makes you ask more questions and the cycle continues because the only reason some people online like trolls aren't empathetic is because they don't know. Every, you know, no one's evil, no one's bad, but everyone has a turning point where there's that eureka moment they understand and it's just about education. If everyone was educated uh, enough, everyone would love people unconditionally around the world. And so the question is, is ignorance bliss? And I have a conversation with my mum quite a lot because she's very scared about me. She thinks I'm going to be sad all the time and she said she'd much rather live in a bubble. And I say to my mum, but if, if the bubble's going to burst, wouldn't you rather know what's going to burst it? And so the, the metaphor I'm going to use is um, this, which, has anyone seen the movie The Village? Okay, it's just the principle. If you haven't, it's about um, a village uh, in a forest. <laughs> very good marketing there. And... Uh, People who live in a village in the middle of a forest. Now imagine there was a forest fire and it was coming towards the village. Would you rather get on with your life and not worry about it or build a watchtower so you can have a look at the time scale we've got and make assessments on how you prepare yourself based on the amount of time you have left? I think people would want the latter and I think that is the challenge we have in society today. We are running out of time, resources are being depleted, the economy is collapsing, we need to start equipping people with the information so we are ready. And how important is truth? We can think of WikiLeaks and stuff like that. You know, there's different things about 9-11. Was it an inside job or not? You know, Dick Cheney and Bush didn't swear an oath and they didn't have their minutes recorded. By having this hidden secrecy, uh, it causes people to have conspiracy theories and to worry. And same with religion. It doesn't matter what religion you are. You think it's a truth. So surely you want stuff to enforce that truth with information. And actually, going back to WikiLeaks, um, only a few days ago, there was a cable released about Osama bin Laden because we all know his body... Uh, was buried at sea, um, except the cables say it wasn't. It was taken back to the US. So more conspiracies come out. Just by having transparency and truth, you uh, eradicate the pointless discussion of conspiracy theories, and we can get to the real issues. So with five minutes to go, uh, I'm going to explain the three stages of my project. Um, the first stage is to create an information database, enable audience acquisition, and create tools for spreading awareness. So the first stage is to create like a wiki site and on each page of the wiki site, there will be a question about a problem. Why is unemployment going up? Why are people dying of a particular disease? Why do people die in car crashes? All these sorts of things. And underneath it, you have a simple paragraph which explains what the root cause is. Because the root cause is what's important, you know. Uh, as Jacques Fresco says, you know, it, if, if the, the road is slippery, don't just say warning the road is slippery. Because oh, we told you so, we put a warning. You know, put um, abrasive in the road to absorb it. And uh, a thought I'd want to leave you with is actually laws. Whenever you look at a law that the government passes, what is it actually saying? It's saying that they failed to deal with the problem. Every law is, they've put in place because they couldn't deal with the problem in the first place. Um, and then underneath the root cause, and actually one more thing on the root cause, um, the metaphor that I used in the primary school I spoke to of very young kids, that they understood it, uh, was working at a toy factory. If, if toys are coming off the production line, you put them in boxes, and then uh, they're coming off broken. You can keep fixing them, putting them in the box, fixing them, putting them in the box. But until you go to the machine and you fix the machine, you're going to save a lot more energy and time. And that's what we need to do with most problems in the world. And then finally on the site, after the root cause, you have the solutions laid out, cited by sources, uh, based on research and not political opinion. And um, it would be quite easily written out and then certain parts will be clickable if people want to find out more information. And it allows people to go on their own journey 
curiosity, awareness, education, awareness, and so on. But one of the questions I get asked quite a lot is, what about moral dilemmas? Does morality get in the way? And the example I want to give you is abortion. Now, people are pro-choice or pro-life. It's, 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 it's something we're never going to have an a, a, a agreement on. But what if we look at the root cause? What's the root cause of abortion? It's unwanted pregnancy. So uh, education's not good enough. Contraception's not good enough. Um, or they don't want to bring up children because they're not financially secure. Now, I'm by no means saying there is an absolution for eradicating the need for abortion, but by dealing with the root cause, the moral discussion no longer needs to exist. Does that make sense? The second stage is audience acquisition. Um, very simple, create databases. Lots of charities working for the same thing. They want to um, solve poverty animal welfare, all this sort of stuff. Why don't they work on the same team? Why are they doing their own brandings and stuff like this? They should be working together. So by creating a database, we approach them, we say, have a look at the problem pages and the solutions. Is there anything you have to add? And we uh, accumulate all their information. And then third, we create tools for spreading awareness. Now, I'm sure you've all been approached by people in the street. Excuse me, are you interested in a certain cause? And... Uh, we may cross the road because we don't know if it's going to relate to us. And we all have an inner hierarchy of what charities matter. You may have lost someone to a certain disease, in which case um, you would um, be likely to give to a cancer charity, for example, or if you had animals, more likely to do that. That's not good enough. It's inefficient just to put posters everywhere about certain causes and assuming. So when we design this website, every one of us in the room could go out with iPads and we go up to people in the street and we say, excuse me, what matters to you? And it goes back to that thing about, you know, selfishness and selflessness. It doesn't matter if it's what bothers them, because when they look at the root causes and when you're going through what matters to them, you learn more about things for yourself and we all become educated. And I think that's the best way we can do it. We can take to the streets worldwide. There was something I did for a band six years ago with Bluetooth where I was able to stream to an entire room a video of the band that was performing for more info. So we could go to protest rallies about a single issue and stream to them all the solutions that we have and the research they need. And I think that's really important. And in places where they don't have internet, each page will be printed off as a flyer. So going back in summary, I can't believe I've done it this quick, um, the, the six issues I said about my personal experience the different establishments I've worked with relates with my project. So we've got charity. It's about bringing them all together because we all want the same thing. It's human problems, not individual. Mainstream media, um, Mainstream media is trying to hang on. Um, it's going out, uh, and I can't wait. Um, and a, a great example is WikiLeaks. Um, the New York Times was publishing WikiLeaks data, uh, and so was the Guardian newspaper, but they stopped after a while. And, and why do we think that was? Maybe government intervention, etc. But what I think it is, is they were shooting themselves in the foot. Because why on earth would people want to pay for a newspaper to read about someone's opinions about facts which are available online for free? So if we can have a website where all the information is there for the problems and solutions, I think that we will be putting news and mainstream media out of business. Healthcare, very quickly, um, it's possible to self-diagnose yourself, although if you want like, heart surgery, probably see a doctor. Um, my dad uh, gave me a great example, because he works in healthcare, um, about an experiment with a robot, where they got a robot to um, diagnose patients, uh, and they, they were only right 50% of the time. The only difference was that the doctor was right less, so that's something worth keeping in mind. Government accountability, um, as Ben McLeish had already said, um, it'd be good to get on question time and stuff like that and have a, a very aware and well-informed uh, public. I can't watch question time anymore because all it is is people angry, shouting slogans, going, why aren't you doing this? It's this frustration and anger. But if they're educated, they'll say, you're not doing it. This is why you're not doing it, and this is what you should be doing. And an educated population is how we turn around the government today. Education, I've said enough about. Um, it should be available for everyone. We should just get all the information to all corners of the earth, regardless of how much you can afford. And finally, activism. Uh, Egypt's a great example, uh, because people took to the streets quite peacefully because they had a solution in mind, and it's why I think we need to engage in people, which is my final point. Um, 
The system is going to collapse. We are running out of time. People are going to start waking up as they get laid off and they lose their jobs. But with frustration and anger, they take to the streets, they shout slogans, they vandalize stuff. But if we can give them information so they can actually understand why it's happening, they can rationalize and they can say, this is why it's not working. This is what we need to do. And that is why it's important we educate everyone because if we don't do it in time, uh, it's going to be too late. And I, I guess a great metaphor is the Titanic. Um, as the Titanic was sinking, there were people drinking at the bar because they thought it was unsinkable. And um, I've spoken to a lot of people now, ex uh, a lot of my friends with a lot of influence online saying, you know, um, the, the system's going to collapse. And they go, yeah, but I'm enjoying it for the meantime. But if you, if you wait until the, the Titanic is just under the water and you all go for the life rafts at once... It's going to sink. It's not going to cater for everyone. If we run out through peak oil and then we need renewable energy and it's just one place in the world, territorial dispute, there's going to be mass civil unrest globally. So we need to start planning now. And with Egypt, Mubarak didn't step down. They cut off the internet and that is when violence broke out. They overthrew the government and then everyone was sweeping the streets the next day. And I think that's a good point for what I'm trying to say there. So with all that in mind, uh, I just want to leave a final thought, which I know has been mentioned already, which um, Jacques Fresco said... Um, when an astronaut goes into space and he looks back, he doesn't see borders. He doesn't see you know, individual countries or cultures. He sees just a world in which we're destroying each other. We're, you know, we're just not working together. And I guess this was actually a frame for this program called Prezi, which is really good for PowerPoint presentations instead. Um, but I guess that represents empathy. We should have the whole world as an empathic society through education. Um, and so on that point, I'm going to leave you with this last slide, which you saw already, which is me. Get in contact. Um, I will be out there next. Um, let's make this happen. Um, the only thing is I need people who can design wiki sites because last year for every 200 people uh, that wanted to help, there was only one programmer. So everyone was like, Miles, what can I do? And I said, it's not ready yet. And of course, they got bored. And I understand a lot of people here have been bored over the years of not having something to do now. So as soon as we get the infrastructure up, we can get this running. We can challenge the government. We can challenge all establishments. And we can have power to the people once more. Thank you for your time. Yeah. <laughs>